Hello and welcome to AWS Innovate 2018. I really appreciate that you're taking time out of your busy schedules to learn more about AWS. My name is Sharad and I'm a Partner Solutions Architect with AWS. In this session, we are going to cover how to migrate and re-platform your on-premises software applications to AWS. Let's see how tools in AWS programs can help in successful software migrations. According to a study performed by IDC in 2017, Virtually all enterprise software vendors are shifting to a SaaS-first innovation and delivery model. As per Forrester research in 2016, by 2020, overall, half of all product revenues in CRM and commerce servers, e-purchasing, and other process apps will come from SaaS subscriptions. The software as a service delivery model is very compelling to many organizations. Agility, market responsiveness, shared infrastructure costs, they all represent an opportunity for businesses to transform their approach to how they build, operate, and monetize their products. Based on feedback from the ISVs we have talked to, there are a number of reasons for the shift towards a SaaS-first approach. Customers are increasingly looking to consume their applications as SaaS, and ISVs are responding to this demand. Additionally, software vendors are looking for ways to be more agile and innovative and easily control and release upgrades, in contrast to traditional models, which requires them to spend valuable resources maintaining multiple versions of a product. Focusing development and support on one version of a product helps drive this. Another benefit of focusing development and support on a one version of a product is that it saves time and money and improve their operational efficiency. Based on data from an AWS Commission study of 106 ISVs conducted by Forrester Consulting, 84% realized cost savings related to application maintenance. Along these same lines, SaaS provides a greater ability to control costs and increase margins by leveraging the economies of scale offered by multi-tenant architectures, and it provides more flexibility in refining their pricing strategy. In the same Forrester study, 82% of interviewed SaaS ISVs had SaaS gross margins that were greater than or the same as on-premises software. And finally, ISVs are moving to SaaS to attract customers in new geographies, different size segments, and new verticals. There are different ways to build SaaS on AWS. Today, we will focus on the refactor, migrate an existing software application from on-premises to AWS. As you can see in this diagram, a typical customer migration journey starts with a lift, shift, and read platform of applications to AWS. Once this workload is on AWS, the next stage will be to optimize and modernize for performance and cost, utilizing the higher order services like containers and serverless. Today, we are going to focus on the first step in this journey, migrating and replatforming your applications to AWS. Before we migrate software onto AWS, it is important that we understand the typical architectural considerations for a software which is utilized in a multi-tenant model. As we look at the range of SaaS architectural considerations and landscape, it decomposes into some relatively distinct layers. There is an application view that focuses more on how multi-tenancy shapes and influences the security and isolation of tenant information. Here, we are more focused on how compute and data are isolated, as well as how a tenant's identity flows through this experience. Then we have a more operational set of concerns. How do we profile, manage, and measure the system's health and individual tenant activity? How do we build in the elements that are needed to proactively assess and react to issues? How do we quantify and analyze a tenant's impact on our environment, and how do we correlate that to the billing and tiering models for the businesses. The SaaS story is the fact that there is no one universal model for all solutions. SaaS comes in many flavors. Some organizations deliver SaaS with a silo model where the entire tenant environment runs in isolation. Others run in a bridge model where some layers are shared and some are isolated. And the third and final category is a fully shared model. As you can imagine, the model you select can have a significant impact on all aspects of your product lifecycle, such as operations, management, monitoring, billing, and analytics. They are all influenced by the flavor of multi-tenancy you select. There are multiple approaches available to deploy a package solution on AWS. 
ranging from a fully isolated deployment to a completely shared SaaS type architecture. In order to support the deployment option, the application itself should be able to support that SaaS multi-tenancy model, which is a basic assumption we will take here before diving deep into the AWS specific components of different deployment models. The decision to pick a particular AWS deployment model depends on multiple criteria, such as the level of segregation across tenants and deployments, application scalability aspects across tenant-specific stacks, tenant-specific application customizations, the cost of deployment, operations and management efforts, and finally, the end tenant metering and billing aspects. Let's take a look at the three-tier application migration in what's called as a minimally invasive approach. Let's assume that the software that we are going to migrate from on-premises to AWS is a three-tier Java-based application called as Panda CRM. We are going to see how we can migrate this into cloud. Let's see how this application can be migrated if you are opting for a rehost or a like-for-like -like approach. There are two options for the landing zone design. Option one is to migrate to a self-managed services. And option two is to migrate to an AWS managed services. Both options are very similar in security and governance part. It only varies in code packaging and operations and platform sections. There are usually three steps involved in an application migration to AWS. First one is plan and deploy the AWS landing zone. A landing zone is a foundation on AWS which usually will be implemented through automated cloud formation templates. The landing zone planning will take care of number of VPCs, networking, AWS multi-account setup, billing, IAM roles, operations, security, and also helps to build an application migration environment. Once the landing zone is ready, the next step is to migrate the application. This is where you would plan for application repackaging and redeployment of your code. During the final database migration phase, AWS database migration service can be leveraged, and it helps you migrate databases to AWS quickly and securely. The source database remains fully operational during the migration, which minimizes the downtime for applications that rely on the database. The AWS database migration service can migrate your data to and from most widely used commercial and open source databases. The service supports homogeneous migrations such as Oracle to Oracle, as well as heterogeneous migrations between different database platforms such as Oracle to Amazon Aurora or Microsoft SQL Server to MySQL. The landing zone is the customer's virtual data center in the cloud, which contains a target area for migrated applications, network connectivity, access management, and account structure. It is important to plan the landing zone using AWS landing zone best practices. Security has always been job zero in AWS, hence ensuring security and compliance is adequately planned throughout the migration to reduce the risk of migration failures. Connection to on-premises is very important and needs to be addressed quickly. A direct connect connection setup can take up to four to six weeks. And let's see what the key considerations are when you're planning for your landing zone. First one is cost. Direct connect is slightly more expensive compared to a VPN setup. So we need to ensure during planning stage, this is included in your budget. The second parameter being data transfer size. Use Direct Connect for large data that requires reliable data transfer. Security, both options are secure, but Direct Connect is more dedicated rather than punching through public internet. Timeline, if the partner has short timeline, calculate the setup time that is required for Direct Connect. It is important that we plan and include security considerations while planning network security groups, NACLs, and subnet isolation. Use of elastic block storage S3 and RDS encryption for data at rest is paramount important. HTTPS for web traffic and database connection and data at transit also needs to be considered. Planning for IAM and identity and access management roles and groups, and planning for governance models for licensing, like bring your own licensing for Oracle and Java application also needs to be considered. CloudWatch and Elastic Beanstalk helps in providing enhanced CloudWatch metrics for health provisioning data of your applications. Leverage AWS Quick Start for landing zone setup. Quick Starts are built by AWS solution architects and partners to help you deploy popular solutions on AWS based on AWS best practices for security and high availability. 
Also, I have highlighted some reInvent sessions on landing zone planning and multi-account strategy. Once the landing zone is deployed and ready, the next step is to start migrating applications. In case of Panda CRM, we choose the silo tenancy. We have two main options. Option one is to deploy as a self-managed service running on EC2 instances. In this case, management operation will be done by system administrators and dedicated DB administrators. This means the administration activities such as patching, provisioning, etc. needs to be taken care by application administrators. The second option is to deploy as an AWS managed service. In this case, the monitoring, operation and management and all the heavy lifting will be done by AWS. It is recommended to use option 2 if we require minimal operating system changes. For example, if you either run on Apache Tomcat 7 or 8 or are packaged with your own web containers, then the benefits include that the Elastic Beanstalk supports the following packaging and deploying mechanisms. For example, custom applications can be deployed and developed directly onto Elastic Beanstalk using Eclipse and the AWS Toolkit for Eclipse. Applications can be packaged into a jar, WAR file or zip file then deployed with Elastic Beanstalk console, CLI or Elastic Beanstalk API calls. Also, in order to deploy multiple applications to a single Elastic Beanstalk environment, customers can bundle multiple WAR files into a single zip file. We have multiple ways to provision the stack for landing zone. We can use Elastic Beanstalk API, dashboard or the CLI option. It's a guided visit for the dashboard and have tons of reference for CLI and API. It is also possible to utilize CloudFormation templates to bring up the Elastic Beanstalk stack, which helps in complete infrastructure optimization. Once the Elastic Beanstalk environment is ready, we just need to deploy the code onto the stack, regardless from the dashboard visit or using the CloudFormation templates. Once the application infrastructure is ready and application code is deployed, the next step is to do a database migration. The AWS provided service, database migration service, can be utilized for this task. There are two prerequisites for using database migration service. One is to open firewall rules on your on-premises database port and ensure you can connect to the replication server on AWS. The next step being setting a row-based binary logging on the source environment. Let's walk through the steps involved here. Once the prerequisites are completed, you need to ensure you have created a DMS replication instance. Add the connection information for the source and target database. The next step is to test the database connection for source and target through the wizard. Next, we need to create a task, set the task settings and table mapping. And once it's completed, we'll start the replication and finally, we will do the cutover. Database migration service has a good dashboard for monitoring database replication tasks. DMS also has CDC or what we call as continuous data capture capability, which ensures data is continuously captured from source to target in RDS environments. This minimizes the downtime for cutover as minimum delta sync is only required prior to the actual cutover. So why did we choose Elastic Beanstalk? Elastic Beanstalk provides the ability to achieve all the SaaS reference architecture requirements with combination of other AWS services. Elastic Beanstalk does integration and validation to a certain extent out of the box itself. Load testing, it can be done using marketplace tools. Any penetration testing request can also be performed with the help of AWS support. Utilizing ISV tools for migration such as Dynatrace, AppDynamic and Neuralic is also possible. Elastic Beanstalk also automatically ensures integration with various stacks like load balancers, web and application environments, and databases. You must ensure security group, NACLs, and connection string are configured in your application correctly. Elastic Beanstalk also does validation automatically with the help of connectivity validation within the stack. Application health can also be checked, and it also provides an enhanced health check in Elastic Beanstalk console. There are various ISV tools and marketplace tools, which also helps the partner in achieving the same results. We learned the steps that are involved in migrating a software to AWS and building a SaaS on AWS. 
Elastic Beanstalk should be highly considered to host a monolithic application as a SaaS platform in the cloud. Other AWS managed services help with heavy lifting of management and operation in the cloud so you can focus on development. Follow the migration practice diligently to achieve similar success results. Leverage the AWS migration tools to accelerate the migration phases of your application. As a next step, in order to maximize innovation and agility by building your SaaS solution on AWS, utilize AWS SaaS Factory, which will provide you more information and guidance, especially around optimization, billing and metering, serverless SaaS, tenant isolation, data partitioning, identity and access, and management and operations. As a next step, let's see how we can leverage a new capability known as AWS Private Link. You'll notice that in this figure, we have a SaaS solution that is hosted in an AWS account on the right-hand side of the diagram. This SaaS provider has their own account and a collection of services running in a VPC. Let's presume these services provide functionality that the provider would like to make available for consumption by environments that are running in other AWS accounts or businesses. They would like to achieve this without opening a public interface and prefer that traffic remain within the confines of the AWS networking infrastructure. This is now directly in the sweet spot of the problem that Private Link solves. With Private Link, we can put a network load balancer in front of our services and attach a VPC endpoint to the load balancer. This configuration assigns a private IP address to the endpoint that can be accessed by external consumers without touching the public network. In fact, these endpoints will appear as if they reside directly in the consumer VPC. While the power of private link has merits in any number of scenarios, it is of particular interest to SaaS organizations. Through private link, SaaS providers see new and creative opportunities to use this networking construct to enhance and expand the architectural and business models of their solutions. We are pleased to announce a new program in Asia Pacific called as TechShift Accelerator. The program is exclusive to software companies in the APN and is designed to help accelerate the migration of your software into cloud native service using best practices. By leveraging application services like Mobile Hub, AppSync, infrastructure services like ECS and Fargate, and AIML with SageMaker, our specialists help you technically integrate these capabilities into your application to create compelling differentiating functionality for your customers. We also help broaden your customer reach by connecting you with other partners, support marketing events, and make it easy for your customers to get started with your software with AWS provided quick starts and marketplace listings. For more details of this program and your eligibility, please speak to an AWS partner development representative. To gain more confidence and hands-on experience with AWS, access the digital training built by AWS experts. Attend our instructor-led classes by qualified AWS instructors and learn how to design, deploy, and operate highly available, cost-effective, and secure applications on AWS. Finally, validate your technical expertise with AWS and use practice exams to help you prepare for AWS certification. To learn more about our APN programs, visit the AWS APN booth at our showcase. I would like to thank you for attending today and sticking it out until the very end of the presentation. Thank you.